So whatever they see here is being recorded. Okay, so how do you set up a image reference like this in this example here? Of course, if you want to model your car or any vehicle, you need to have the image reference first. So what you see here is a Tesla vehicle. So let's go to the folder containing the image references. So this is the image that I've actually done some processing in Photoshop. Over here, you can see some red lines that have drawn on the vehicle itself. So the original vehicle, or rather the original image wasn't a square image like this. So let me just open this in Photoshop. Just right mouse click and then open with Photoshop. Okay, I think I have to run Photoshop here. Okay, let me just show you the original image, uh, the aspect ratio, what it was supposed to be like first. Now you can see here, this image is actually a square image uh, because this was previously processed, but the original image is actually looking like this and it doesn't have any red lines on it, right? So let me just start from the beginning first. Now, how do you draw red lines onto, let's say this image? Okay, you can use a tool called stroking. That means you want to stroke the lines onto it. So I'm going to show you quickly how I did the red lines. You use the selection, the box selection tool, and then you just drag a box. Okay, whatever the dotted line you see here, when you apply something called stroke, you go to edit and you hit stroke, and you change the color, let's say a red line, and then you just click OK, you will stroke a red line onto it. Okay, currently it doesn't stroke because this layer is locked, so I'm going to release the layer by double clicking on it. Click OK. All right, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to try the stroking again. Edit and stroke, and then click OK. And now you can see the red lines are being drawn. So that is how I stroke or draw lines onto my line drawing. So why do I need the lines? Okay, the lines I draw usually, I use it to split the vehicle into half. And later when you bring it into Maya, it'll be very useful to line up. Okay, so once you stroke the images already, the reference image, one thing you need to check and make very, very sure, to check very sure is to uh, ensure that the width of the drawings matches the width of the top view. Sometimes some 3D drawings are not done properly. Okay, there are instances where the wide view or rather the side view is slightly wider or the top view is slightly wider than the front view. Okay, there could be instances like this. So make sure that your image, right, that you source, your reference is accurate. Okay, once you've done that, the next thing you want to do is you want to convert this into a square image. So currently it's a rectangular image. So the next step you need to do is go to image, okay, canvas size, and then you can change the longest length of the image to match the shortest length of the image. In this case, the shortest length is the height. So I'm going to copy this value and I'm going to paste it over this value and make sure your background color is set to white and then click OK. And now you check the size of the image. Now it is a square. Okay, I'm going to flatten this image, move the cursor over the layers in Photoshop, right mouse click and then flatten the image. And then you can save it out. So I'm going to file, save as, for this reference number two, and then click save. Okay, and then click OK. So let's jump over to Maya right now. I'm going to start a brand new project. I'm going to set my project. Okay, remember to set your project. Okay, and then I'm going to, first thing, create a plane. So using my shortcut combination, holding down the shift key, right mouse click, and then drag to a polyplane. So you end up with a polyplane with a multiple segments. Go over to the channel box on the right, go to the subdivision here, click and highlight the text, middle mouse click and drag to the left to reduce the number of divisions until they become one by one. 
go ahead and scale it up. We need to scale up the reference image until it fills up the entire grid. Next, apply the image texture. Right mouse click onto it, assign new material. And the material we always use is the surface shader, okay, because it's not affected by the lights. Under the surface, surface shader attributes, click on out color checker box. Okay, and choose file. Go to image name, the folder box here, click on the folder and click on the image that I prepared earlier on and then click open. Okay, if you don't see any texture on it, don't panic. Okay, you just need to press number six on your number row to show the texture. Now you notice that the texture is correct in scale. Okay, there is no distortion. You don't need to go to the UV texture editor to go and adjust. So my reference is ready. Okay, so now let's start by aligning the side view first. Now the side view, the car should be pointing towards the Z direction. In this case, it's the blue arrow here. So I'm going to rotate. So the rotate shortcut key is E. Holding down your J key, grab the rotate X axis and you can 15 degrees step rotate until it is 90 degrees rotated. How do you tell whether it's 90 degrees? If you look at the lower right hand corner here, you can see the amount of angle that you can rotate. So now it's 90 degrees X axis. Okay, now I'm going to continue doing it, holding on to the J key to activate snap rotate, grab and then rotate it until it is another 90 degrees. Now I have the image of my car pointing forward. So press W to go to move again and then move it down. And there, here you can see why the red lines are important. You can use the red line, drag it down until it lines up with the grid line. Okay, so we are our side view is now aligned. So I'm going to push the side view uh, away. So now how do I extract the rest of this uh, drawings? We're going to use the insert edge loop tool. Go to right mouse click, go to edge, select the edge, shift right mouse click, insert edge loop. And then I'm going to insert one edge loop here. And then I'm going to insert one edge loop here. So I effectively cut this into four pieces. Okay, next, I want to extract them out. So select this piece here. Okay, and then you can go and detach it. Now I'm going to show you this two box here, polygon two box. There is this thing here all uh, separate. You can see whether this thing works. Okay, this one okay, is for the whole object. So I'm going to use another tool. Where is it? Let me see. Detach, okay. Okay, so now this part is detached. This one, I'm going to apply detach. So press G again to repeat last command. So detach, then press G again, and then now this part will detach. Okay, but take note, this is still a single object. So I need to separate them. Okay, so now this piece is separated. I select, now I right mouse click, go to inspect this face, separate, right mouse click, go to this face, and separate. Or you can press G to repeat last command. So now I have four individual objects. Okay, see this individual object, but their center is always the same here. So I want to move the center, shift the center to the plane of this object. So I select this, modify, center pivot. Select this piece, repeat last command, press G. Select this piece, repeat last command, G. Now the center has moved to the plane here. So now we've got a side view done. I'm going to put the side aside. Now we are going to do the top view. So select the top view. Press E to rotate, holding down the J, snap rotate until it is 90 degrees pointing upwards. Then press W and then bring it up. Okay, again, we can go to the top view to align our car until it lines up with the center line. Okay, go back to the perspective view. I tap the space bar and then go to perspective view, drag to the perspective view. And now I want to align my top view and my side view be together. So I'm going to push this up until it's right about here. So you can see now it's not aligned. 
Then I'm gonna push this back until the red line. You can see this is why I draw my red line. Now my red line cuts each other. So now it's lined up. Okay, now my top view and my side view is aligned. Okay, for this case, right, we are not gonna use the back view. Okay, unless you are modeling the back, we can put the back in again. But for the front view, we're just gonna rotate this forward, press E to rotate, holding down the J again to snap rotate 90 degrees forward, then press W and then push this forward. Okay, this is the front view. Actually, the front view should be behind here. So again, move this until the red line touches the center. See here, center here. And then the red line, pull down the car until the red line touches the grid. So for the front view, we are aligned. To double confirm, I'm going to check whether it lines up with the side view okay it's slightly off but it is about there okay, i'm going to move the side view down a little bit more and the front view up a little bit more okay now it's perfectly lined up okay and then finally the back view since we are here we might as well just line it up holding down the j rotate this 90 degrees press uh, e to rotate huh? and then i'm going to push this up until it lines up with the grid line. Okay, all of you must know how to do this because if you do not know how to line up your references, you're gonna have a hard time, or you will not your model will not end up looking accurate. Okay. okay I think I went too low on this one. Okay, so for this layer here, I do not, or rather this reference, I do not need it yet. So I'm going to put it in a different layer. So you go to channel box. Okay, with this thing still selected, you click on this icon here. So you put it in the layer, then I can hide it. And then for all these three pieces, I can put them in a separate layer. So select by dragging a box over the three pieces and put them in a layer. You can rename the layer, you can call it by double clicking on the layer. Call it reference and then save. Okay, so now you have a choice of hiding and hiding them, or you can freeze them so that no one can move or touch them. Okay, and if you feel that oh, these white pieces are very annoying, I want to get rid of them. Simple, just go to edge mode, go to insert edge loop again. Okay, you all learned about insert edge loop yesterday. Then you go to face and delete away the face. This is doing some cleanup here. Edge mode, shift, right mouse click, insert edge loop. Okay, and then press Q to go to selection mode, right mouse click and drag, select face, delete away. So I'm doing some cleanup here. Insert edge loop. Press Q to go back to select, right mouse click and hold, go to face, select this face and delete. Okay, and then your tree view is now aligned. Now, how do you tell that this is properly aligned? Okay, if you go to the side view, you tap and hold onto your space bar to bring up the marking menu. Left mouse click and drag to the right view, which is your side view. You should see your side view. If you tap and hold your space bar, marking menu, and then you click and drag to the top view, you should see what? Your top view. And your top view should be pointing downwards. And your front view, if you type your space bar, click again on the word Maya, and then go to front view, you should see the front view. Then you know for sure your lineup is correct. And you can you are ready to start to model. Front view is correct, side view correct, and your top view is correct. And then you check your perspective, everything is in the correct location. So remember, the side and the front view must always be oriented towards the Z direction. Okay, your side view, when you see side view, it must be your side view. If you can see the text at the bottom here, it says side. So you must see the side view. Please remember this. This is very important. Your front view, it must be the front here. Okay? Front and front. If you see front and then you have the side view here, that means your orientation is wrong. Understood? And if your top view, naturally, top view must match with the viewport top. Okay, everyone clear about this? Okay, so I'm going to stop uh, streaming now.
Okay, if you're not sure, please just watch this video again. I'm going to stop broadcasting.